Hello, folks. My name is Charlie Wright. I'm going out with my new camera. Want to come along? At times, it can be easy to get caught up in the search for perfection. The sharpest lens, largest negative, best scanning workflow, and easily forgotten in all of that is that sometimes limitations aren't a bad thing. The Pentax Auto 110 definitely has limitations, and it's probably not a camera that you're gonna pick up to shoot your next long-term project. But if there's one thing this strange little SLR has taught me, it's that sometimes it's when a camera can't do it all that we actually feel the most free to create. So I was first introduced to this camera after coming across some images on Instagram that just had a really unique look, almost kind of 16 millimeter film-like with a ton of character. And after doing a search to find out what a Pentax Auto 110 actually was, I was surprised to see pictures of this incredibly tiny SLR that actually kind of looked like a toy. And after doing some research and finding out that this was the 110 camera to own back in the day and that you could still buy film for it, I knew I had to try it out. For those of you who aren't familiar with 110 film, uh, it's a lot smaller than a 35 millimeter negative. Uh, it's very close to say 16 millimeter motion picture film. And I believe the only company still making film is Lomography, but they have a couple different film stocks. So it is pretty cool that it's still being made. Uh, but I have their 200 speed color negative film loaded, which is called Tiger, I believe. Uh, haven't had any of it developed yet. Uh, so yeah, pretty excited to see how it looks. Cool little scene back here, these two trucks. Definitely worth shooting. This camera is actually surprisingly featured for what it is. And obviously one of the biggest ones is the fact that it has interchangeable lenses. And these things are just so tiny. This is the 24 mm 28, which is just kind of hilarious. And then the other thing is that it has an automatic exposure system, which I found out actually works pretty decent considering I didn't have high hopes in the first place. Fun little scene right here. Pretty cool with these tires stacked up. So I was originally looking to just pick up the camera with an 18 mil lens, which is what's on here right now and is equivalent to about a 35 mil in 135 format. But I kind of lucked out and I came across an entire original kit, which came in this super slick little Pentax briefcase that I gotta say I'm pretty excited about. So the set that I got came with a power winder, a flash, an entire filter set, and then three lenses. An 18mm 2.8, 24 2.8, and 50 2.8. So like I mentioned before, the camera is fully automatic and there's actually no way to choose your shutter speed or your aperture, and you actually don't ever know which settings the camera is using. The only thing that there is, is in the viewfinder, there's two lights. So there's a green light, which means you're pretty much good to go. And then there's an amber light, which shows up when your shutter speed's getting a little slow. So a couple things that surprised me about this camera. The first one is definitely the size and how tiny this thing is. You know, you see images of it and you know it's a 110 camera, so you expect it's gonna be small. Uh, but until you get it in your hands, it's hard to really get an idea of how tiny this thing actually is. And then the second thing is the size of the viewfinder. You know, with it being a small camera, I expected it was gonna be a bit of a pain to use, but it's actually really nice and bright uh, and even has a split image focusing screen, which is pretty awesome.
When it comes to the images out of this camera, I gotta say they actually have a really cool look. And I mean, they're definitely not sharp. They're pretty soft. Uh, they're full of grain, but I was actually really surprised how the Lomography color negative film rendered tones considering how small the negative size is with this camera. And then the colors themselves are actually pretty nice as well. The images aren't without their flaws, then you're definitely not going to print one of these out 20 inches wide and put it on your wall. But if you keep your expectations in check, it's a really fun film size to work with. So loving these scenes, they're so simple, but just all the lines on the road make for some uh, you know, pretty interesting compositions, especially with uh, the lens that I have on, I got an 18 mil 2.8, which is equivalent to about a 35, so a little wide. Uh, and working pretty good right now. So obviously the negative size with this camera is really small and depending on which way you look at it, uh, that could be a bit of a, a, a downside, but you know, for me, I certainly wouldn't use this camera for like a long-term project or something, but uh, you know, in many ways it's these kind of quirky film stocks and these interesting cameras that often uh, really kind of inspire creativity and can have a big influence on the direction of smaller projects like a, a zine or something. So, you know, it's fun to just play around with these, uh, have some fun and just see where things go. The light from the rising sun is always a source of inspiration and wonder. So I spent two days now just shooting with this camera and I gotta say, honestly, it's just a ton of fun. And, you know, it's one of those cameras where it's really easy to accept its limitations and you accept that, you know, the images are going to have some quirks because the camera is what it is. But that's what makes it so much fun. You know, it allows you to just go out. You know, you're not trying to make everything perfect. Uh, it's just a way to kind of go out and, you know, play around and have some fun. And that's kind of what it's all about. This one could be fun here just with these lines and these letters and stuff it can make for neat composition. Light's getting pretty nice down there. Like with any other film format, shooting on 110 isn't cheap. And even though the camera itself can be had for pretty cheap, developing and scanning still adds up. So you're really gonna have to decide what you consider is worth it or not. For me, my time spent shooting with the Auto 110 was definitely about more than just the images themselves. And I think any time spent creating is important. And personally, I think there's a ton of value to be found in the process itself. Even if sometimes that means leaving the bigger cameras at home and going out with a quirky old camera like the Pentax Auto 110. At the very least, my time spent with this camera brought back some of that curiosity and experimentation that at times can be easily lost in the pursuit of perfection. And oh yeah, by the way, goodbye again.